Oh, come on, this video was always going to start like that. I'm guessing that you've watched all of the iPhone 15 Pro Max reviews by now. This isn't a full review, it can't be. I've only had this, well, I've had it for less than 24 hours. But there are some things about this phone that I need to address straight away. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max 512 gigabyte version in natural, natural, why can't I say that word? Natural titanium. What is it like during those crucial first few hours where you pick this thing out of the box, look at it and think, was this worth it? It's a vital part of the ownership experience. It's probably, arguably, more important than the rest of it, really, because whatever you think about this phone to begin with sets the scene for the rest of the ownership. And this time around, there are some very important things to cover. If you've just bought yourself an iPhone 15 Pro Max, it might be tempting to keep it naked like this because it looks so lovely, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's incredibly expensive. So instead, I'd recommend getting a case, and in particular, the Kaseku Magic Stand Cloud Cush. Now this is a case that offers 360 degree protection via built-in airbags, yes, airbags. There's military grade drop resistance of up to three meters, built in MagSafe charging, and a feel that is, as the name suggests, cloud-like. This really is a super comfortable case to hold for long periods of time, so if you do a lot of gaming or you just tend to use your phone a lot throughout the day, this case doesn't get tiring to hold. The buttons feel incredibly satisfying to use and responsive, and the camera protection is a lovely thing. Given how important the camera system is on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the fact that the Cloud Cush case protects it so well is massive peace of mind. But what sets this case apart from lots of other cases is this. This is a stand which offers viewing angles between 40 and 120 degrees. And it's been tested to 30,000 openings, which is essentially eight years worth of opening and closing this thing if you were to use the stand every single day. Which you probably will, because this is such a useful thing. I use it all the time, whether it's to kind of watch YouTube videos while I'm eating lunch. It's a very simple thing that only makes sense, really, when you start using it. I absolutely love these Kaseku cases. They're definitely worth checking out, and I've put a link below so you can do just that. Right, let's start with the colour because I very nearly went for the white this time around. The reason I nearly went for the white is because with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I went for deep purple. And the only reason I did that is because of the band Deep Purple. It was a stupid idea. This is still my least favourite iPhone colour ever. The good news is that this one, I think, is my favorite iPhone color ever. It's a little bit like a phone-shaped Apple Watch Ultra. They really do complement each other very nicely. It's the brushed sides that are the same color, I think, as the Apple Watch Ultra. The back is a little bit of a, it's a slightly different shade, but it's it's still very, very nice. It's got, it's got like a kind of matte feel to it. The only thing I'm gonna moan about as a YouTuber is the fact that the brushed sides still smudge. If you've ever reviewed anything, you'll know that you spend most of your time with one of these polishing the phone, because as soon as you pick it up, it gets smudges. And the worst for that has always been these very shiny sides that we had on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I was hopeful that wouldn't be the case with these, but they do pick up a lot of smudges. Does that matter? No, not at all. I'm fairly confident in saying that this is the best looking iPhone we've ever had. Fight me in the comments. Now there's no notable design changes to talk about really, apart from one thing which I'll come on to later, but this is made from 100% recycled titanium, which is a, a very good thing. It's also the same grade five titanium they used on the Mars Rover apparently, so in theory, it should take some stick. The other thing that you notice about the iPhone 15 Pro Max immediately is the weight. It is much, much lighter, in fact, surprisingly lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The difference is 8% on paper, but it does feel more substantial than that. Now, it's not as light as the Nothing Phone 1 or Nothing Phone 2, but this is a massive step in the right direction for Apple. I've always thought that the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max have been lovely phones, but they've also been very cumbersome. The weight combined with this massive form factor just makes it a bit of a monster in your pocket. Stop laughing at the back. So to get an iPhone 15 Pro Max that is lighter, I think will make for a better ownership experience. I think the weight of this phone is a much bigger deal than people realize. All of the rumors suggested that we'd be getting much smaller bezels on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. In reality, they are thinner slightly, but you do have to look for it. 
However, weirdly, and I can't quite work out how this is happening, it does feel more substantial when you don't compare it against the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's one of those weird instances where not comparing it against the previous generation is more impressive. There's something about this display that feels bigger, even though the reduction in bezels is quite small. And regardless, would you want thinner bezels than this? I don't think so. I've used phones that have barely any bezels or no bezels whatsoever, and they're just annoying because you keep pressing things by mistake. Everything else is the same as the iPhone 14 Pro Max, including the Dynamic Island, which after a year of use, I can confidently say is absolutely fine, but completely unspectacular. We now get it across the entire range. It's now a standard feature. It's not going anywhere for quite a while, I don't think, but I wouldn't buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max based on Dynamic Island. Despite that, this is a lovely display. However, I will be comparing it against the S23 Ultra next week. So if you don't want to miss that video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. The S23 Ultra, I think personally, still has the best display on the market. Can this be it. Okay, USB-C. This is a big deal. I know I made a joke of it at the start of this video. It's really important. And I know it's annoying if you've got loads of lightning cables and lightning accessories. The fact we are now going wholesale over to USB-C is probably a bit jarring, but it is the standard. Every other device I have in this room uses USB-C. Apple has been way behind with this. And the good news is on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we get proper USB 3 speeds. So this can transfer data at up to 10 gigabits per second. And that's super important, bearing in mind you can shoot really high resolution ProRes video on this phone. You could do that before with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but transferring that data from this port, the old, the old, we can say old lightning port now, transferring data from this takes weeks. But it's just so convenient to now have USB-C charging across all of Apple's devices. So from the Mac to the iPad to the AirPods Pro, even the EarPods, the wired EarPods are now USB-C. The one thing missing from that is AirPods Max. Please, Tim, give us a new pair of AirPods Max with USB-C charging. The time has come. Something else we've waved goodbye to this year is the mute switch. So this has been on iPhones for as long as we can remember. Getting rid of it though isn't a big deal. I don't know about you, but I'd get a new iPhone, do that, and then leave it like that for the rest of the ownership. I think most people did the same thing, which is why having this new action button here is such a smart idea. And the reason it's smart is because we can customize it. Also, if you're wondering how to mute your iPhone now, you just pull down the control center and there's a mute switch here. It's also worth noting that the action button is a proper button. It does depress and click, so it's not solid state, which is what some of the rumors were suggesting. And you can customize it in a number of really interesting ways. So you can switch between focus modes. You can use it for the camera, both in terms of firing it up and using it as a shutter button. You can turn on the torch. You can do a voice memo. You can use it as a magnifier. You can run an app or a shortcut or you can use an accessibility feature, or you can have it as no action, which I don't know why you'd do that. I've set mine to the camera for the time being, but I might change that in the future because I quite like the idea of having this as a focus mode switch. If I'm filming, for instance, I have a filming focus mode. Just pressing this to go into that mode is quite useful. And it's worth noting that you do have to press and hold for about a second for this thing to work, which makes sense because it means you won't get any ghost presses while it's in your pocket. I just wish it was internet Orange. Now I will be doing a much more comprehensive camera review of this phone next week and comparing it against the S23 Ultra, so again remember to subscribe, but it's definitely worth talking about the camera controls because they have changed in a quite interesting and slightly confusing way. When you go into the camera app on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, everything looks normal, but there is a new way to access the focal lens. So the wide angle is still 13 millimeters and sits beneath the 0.5 button. The One X is 24 millimeters, but the difference is that when you press that One X button again, you get access to 1.2 X, which is 28 millimeters. And then if you press it again, you get access to 1.5 X, which is 35 millimeters. We then have buttons for the 2X, which is 48 millimeters, and 5X, which is the brand new, not a periscope lens, 120 millimeter focal length. I love this new range of focal lengths. They're very considered. They're very much standard 
photography focal lengths, which people will enjoy using. And my worry is that some people won't realize that the 28 millimeter and the 35 millimeter options exist. But this is a fantastic camera system, as you would expect. If we're coming from the iPhone 14 Pro Max as a baseline, we're onto a very good thing straight away. I do need to put that 120 millimeter focal length to test, which I'm doing next week against the S23 Ultra in London, so stay tuned for that. But what is my conclusion about this phone after less than 24 hours? It doesn't make any sense to upgrade from the iPhone 14 Pro Max to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's just not enough meaningful updates. However, if you're coming from the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12 or anything below that, obviously, this is a very good buy. We have reached peak smartphone innovation across most brands, but the choice of titanium for this and that USB-C charging port and that new 120mm focal length means it's actually quite a good year for the iPhone. And and if you're thinking about buying an iPad this year as well, hang around for a link to another video that you're going to find very useful indeed.